Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Coffee Break, and welcome back to the Coffee Cast Pro Cast Edition. Today's cast will be a Terran versus Terran, which is a cast that I haven't done in quite some time, if I might say. Spawning on the lower left-hand side, it's his freaking birthday, guys! Give it up for our pink Terran player, Liquid Tasia. And spawning on the top right-hand side, he is the hero of Reddit. It is going to be our yellow Terran player. It is going to be Marine. King Prime. As far as I know, this series is just like a, a like a best of three played on Battle.net or three random replays played on Battle.net. I'm actually not exactly certain. The site that I downloaded these these games off of um, pretty much just said it was from Battle.net, so it didn't say you know it was from the Zodiac Cup or DreamHack or anything. So I'm just gonna kind of be going with it, treating it like a best of three right now, and calling it good. Heck yes. Heck yes, we're calling it good. We actually have a gas first out of MKP. I, I would like to say starting off already with something just kind of different. Now, I, I do know I have heard of the gas first before, and I wish I could tell you what that means, but it is literally one of those things that I've only ever heard of in theory, and I can't actually remember what it means. So I'm going to be I'm gonna be figuring this out just as well as you guys as this goes along here. I'm really interested to see where exactly MKP does decide to go with this. Of course, the barracks lay down immediately after that gas goes down. Three guys going into that geyser upon completion. Teja is going to be the one walling off this game, though. I, I, I don't know. I've, I've always been kind of back and forth as to whether or not you should wall off in, against a Terran player because I mean it's so easy just to pull some Marauders and stuff to the low ground and just like snipe a supply depot or something really I don't think it's that big of a deal I don't think it's that big of a deal at all but uh, it's it's just kind of one of those personal preference things when I do play Terran on the off chance let, let me rephrase that on the off chance that I accidentally select Terran to play I do not wall off against other Terran players or Protoss I only wall off against Zerg really we do have a factory and a reactor going down on that barracks here so it looks like Hellion play is going to be the choice of Liquidage, especially since he's still only on one gas. No, not really any chance of getting a starport coming down onto the field. So these buildings are going to be switching off and going to be starting to pump out Hellions, which actually may not be too bad against what Liquidage is doing here, because he did do a one racked, I believe, gasless expand. Yeah, because these geysers just now going down in his main base. So Teja did do this one racked gasless expand here. So double Hellion production might prove to be rather potent as as, oh, there we go. Now the reactor's finishing up. I was going to say, he's only making one, and I don't really know why. There's the starboard being hidden down on the lower left-hand side here. This is actually really interesting. This Is this going to be Marine Hellion Banshee? Maybe coming out of coming out of Tetra, or maybe this will be used to make a medevac to drop off into the main. Well, once again, I, I'm just kind of guessing along at this point. There's no tech lab on another building, though. So I can't assume that this is going to be Banshees, otherwise I, I really feel like there would be like a, the starport over here and a tech lab on the factory or something. So I can only assume it's going to be a, a medevac, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. Well, that is finished up. There we go. Yeah, it is going to be medevac there. So they rather going to be dropping Hellions probably into the main base here. Maybe a couple of Marines even just for the fun. Probably going to be actually shooting the Marines up against the main door here and putting the Hellions in the back of the base if I were to theorize as to what exactly is going to happen here. So a little bit of one play, one base play coming out of MKP there. Nothing wrong with that. And once again, that might work out quite well into his favor because we only have a one single barracks that's not producing anything right now and a factory on the field for Liquidators who very very little back here to defend with that medevac is out onto the field where is it where that's a that's a hellion wow i where is it there it is there's the medevac so there's the medevac this is actually quite a sizable force coming out of mkp who uh well i mean he, he's gonna need to start doing some good damage here because liquidaja is up on double scv and double mule production mkp obviously does not even have a command center on the field quite yet going to be picking these units up, probably just elevating everything up into the main base. It looks like Liquidator has caught wind of this now, going to be trying to put down a bunker, but that, oh no, that's the supply depot, pardon me. That is way too late for that. Now, now MKP going to be streaming right on into the main base. Remember, there really is not all that much here for Liquidator, who's going to be gathering up all of his SCVs, all of his Marines, and all of his Hellions here, and trying to do something. Tejo actually taking quite a bit of damage here, because they gave him more air with all these SCVs up against these Hellions. A lot of SCVs dying, I... I think in there it's kind of hard to tell oh yeah that's way less than what he went in with there and this attack from MKP 
doing a marvelous amount of damage there. Didn't really manage to kill any of the uh, offensive units of Liquid Teja, but that's not what matters here because Teja down to just 17 SCVs, and now a command center coming down for MKP. And that's going to even things up very, very nicely. In fact, MKP even dropping back up onto the high ground because he really can. So far, 18 workers have gone down for Teja. MKP doing, once again, marvelous damage with this attack. And, oh, trying to go in for another attack. This one's not going to be working quite as well, I believe. Actually, well, I guess he is going to end up winning that one. Going to be going back and forth. You're trying to kill off that Hellion. That's exactly what Teja wants. But there we go. Here comes the Banshee. And that is going to be the end of this harassment here. Maybe one or two more SUVs going down there. Three SUVs actually dying before finally these two last Marines are picked up and shipped back home. So that was kind of a nightmare for Liquid Tage in there. He lost 25 workers in, in this engagement. Oh no! Actually now a Viking out on the field to counter this Banshee. That Medivac, oh, not going to be getting targeted. Actually, the, the Viking is going to be being targeted there. That next Banshee is a about three-fourths the way completed, though. He just needs to hold on for that and get a couple Marines on the field to be able to take out this Viking, who's down with only 25 health left. That command center for MKP just had to finish up there. Oh, those SCVs lining up pretty badly. They're trying to get up, up on top of that uh, Viking. They do get the Viking, which once again means that these units are completely defenseless versus this Banshee. MKP's next Viking is already here though. MKP keeping up the pressure of morphing his uh, command center into an orbital command over at his natural expansion now and just keeping up this production, the double Hellion production now. I, it looks like this does have a reactor on it now. Double Hellion production, still no add-on onto that starport. Sending the Viking into this base first looking for that Banshee not going to see it, which means that he can go ahead and pull the medevac in and drop off his payload there. Once again, going into that mineral line. This mineral line has just been under such pressure. It would be awful to be an SCV in that mineral line right there. There we go. Now, Viking coming out onto the field for Liquid Tager, and it's going to be enough as that Viking taking a couple shots for the Marines as well. Now, the Banshee does come back in to reinforce the rest of the ground troops of Liquid Tager. MKP still up 49 to 32 supply, and that's pretty fluctuating right there, but it looks like the medevac has finally gone down to MKP going to be forced to fall back home and halt his aggression but not to worry because guess what we have a raven we have a raven coming onto the field hunter seeker missile no longer needs to be researched either so that raven automatically have, has all of its potency unlocked except for uh, except for I guess it does have a starting energy upgrade that technically uh, MKP could research but nobody ever ever will yeah the Corvid reactor right there uh, I wouldn't say ever actually it's just not essential, I would say. Not essential. Hellions are going to be trying to poke into the natural expansion here, running straight up, taking out a Hellion for two of his own. Maybe not the best right there, but he did get a nice scout off to see what exactly is here to defend with. Two Marines all that's on the field right now for a Liquidator trying to pull those back up in... Uh, pardon me, two Mobile Marines. I guess there's four in the bunker as well. Trying to pull those back up into the main base. Going to be dropping another supply depot down in his main base near that edge there. And it looks like, what, are this, what is this? Ooh, a Viking and a Banshee moving to the north side of the map. We're going to be able to take out the, the SUV, at least building this command center, if nothing else. And that command center is going to be stalled greatly due to that. And now there we go, MKP going to maybe be taking a little damage if it don't here. Ooh, but Teja needs to be careful. There is this missile turret in the middle line. Ooh, nice drop off of the Viking there, landing it right next to that. Oh, that oh that ban that Raven is quite out in the open there. Unfortunately, uh, Teja cannot take advantage of that Raven positioning as the Viking of MKP is now back over here. Looking back at Tage's base here, he has gotten a little bit of an economy going once again back at, at natural expansion, trying to get his main base resaturated as well, but he just has taken so many losses. 39 to 33 SCVs, and considering the fact that Tage went for a command center right after his barracks, I mean... MKP should not be in that good of an economic position, but he was just able to do so much damage in the early game. So now the question is, where exactly do you go from here? MKP going to be sticking with his current composition, just adding in uh, maybe another Raven or two at some point in time here. And that Raven probably is going to be used for the... Um, oh crap, what's it called? Point Defense Drone, there we go. Wow, it has been a while since I cast it. Hellions are actually going to be over in the middle line of MKP there. And now Tager is going to be able to do some reactionary damage here. This is actually doing quite a bit of damage as MKP was taking all the time in the world to pull his forces back home because he was positioned out in the middle of the map. There we go. That's what we needed from Tager is a little bit of counter harassment. I believe seven SCVs went down in that engagement. And now everything is starting to even back up once again. Like I was saying, I think that, uh, that Raven is just going to be used for the point defense drone to keep his own Viking alive to be able to kill off the Banshees of his opponent. 
In the meantime, Liquidator does have a Raven of his own. does not have even close to the amount of energy he needs for really anything useful right now. Needs about another 20 seconds to be able to get that up onto the field. Banshee is going to be moving forward, trying to pick off a couple of units, but this is kind of a scary situation for Tejo. He needs to be very careful how he engages this, because his opponent just plain flat out kind of has more over here than Tejo. I mean, 53 to 30 army supply right now. Even a sea tank on the field to help take out that bunker. The turret does go down because that's really all he can afford to do right now. That's everything he needs. Just any bit of DPS he can possibly muster up. But I don't think it's going to be enough because MKP has already broken through that first bunker line and pretty much the entirety of the forces of Tejo there. Tejo going to be up against the ropes right here. One Viking left on the field. There we go. The Viking does go down for Tejo, which means these Banshees are going to be in a lot of trouble. Oh, but Tejo does have a reinforcing Viking coming onto the field as well. But just two Banshees left. Uh, and a Viking up in the air against, well, anything MKP can really muster up, which is going to be more than anything and Tejo can muster up. There's kind of an interesting uh, mech composition here of pretty much anything that's not bio, I guess, is in this army. We have the Hellions and Sea Tanks. We've had uh, Ravens and Vikings over there. I guess we were kind of missing the Banshees as well for, the, for that air attack. Oh, no! Tejo going to be got, uh, getting his, his Viking caught off guard there, but I do think that he got the Raven in exchange, which means that that is definitely, definitely worth it right there. Those Ravens are very, very expensive. Going to be repairing these Banshees. That's going to be his last line of defense. Tejo really does not have all that much unit production facilities on the field. Trying to switch over to Mech here. Trying to get Siege Tanks. Trying to get Hellions. But I don't know if he's going to have the time he really needs. Oh, two Vikings up in the air right now for MKP to just the one of Liquid Tejo, which means these Banshees are going to be in a lot of trouble here. They're trying to move forward. They're trying to do damage, but they're not going to be able to get there. Only a single Siege Tank. There go the Mander Mules from MKP. I don't think Tejo can hold this one. There go all the SCVs as well due to the Hellion fire. And that is going to be it for Liquid Tejo in game number one. GG from Tejo. And that means that we will be going on to game number two in just a moment here. An interesting opening out of MKP. Can you do the same thing in game number two? Or is Tejo going to be a little bit more ready for it? Let's find out, folks. Stick around for the next game. And until next time, this is Coffee Break, signing out.